and we've objectivized and ridiculed our prime ministers to really um, uh, an extent that is probably unhealthy in a, in a democracy. Of course, they played their own part in that omnipotent sense that uh, they like to project, but you know, they, these are people, um, they're human beings. Um, they're often uh, psychological outliers uh, who would want to become uh, prime minister. Um, it it uh, changes their lives forever, and yet most most of them, almost all of them, have left in tears, bitterly frustrated with long um, post retirements where they've survived for long. Um, you know, re recollecting in bitterness and sadness what they didn't achieve for their spouses. It's often a pretty dreadful time as it is for their children. Many of the children of prime ministers have not fared uh, well in the world. So what I'm trying to do is to try to, to emphasize the humanity of the job, um, which I think is important in a democracy. You know, and it's, it is worrying that um, how little experience recent incumbents have, the most, uh, the, including the current incumbent, Boris Johnson. Uh, the uh, last five have only worked in three Whitehall departments before them, uh, but but before they came into number ten, very little experience, very little experience, and uh, and the five before that had about twenty different um, departments they'd worked in. Five before that, uh, thirty. So you can see a, a very significant um, decline in experience, and I think it shows. Uh, it shows because they make often the most basic of mistakes. Well, we all think that it's changed extraordinarily and that Walpole and those 18th and 19th century prime ministers were a pretty useless lot, really, and didn't have many uh, powers. But recently, the, the prime minister has become uh, presidential and people look at uh, Harold Wilson and, and Margaret Thatcher and Tony Blair and maybe now uh, Boris Johnson uh, for acting in presidential ways as opposed to those minnows who held the office in the first two and a half centuries. But actually, you know, nice stuff, really riveting, and political scientists love uh, talking about it and writing lots of books about uh, the, the, the presidential prime minister. But it just doesn't fit with the facts of history because. Um, uh, many earlier prime ministers were extremely uh, presidential because what the word presidential means is open to debate. But if it means um, uh, acting as if they are the head of state, which is what the president is, for example, in America, as well as head of government, well, Walpole was acting as head of state you know, significantly. And, and so were some of the key figures who followed them. Uh, Gladstone, uh, Lloyd George, I mean, goodness, if that wasn't a presidential prime minister 100 years ago, um, th then uh, who was? So the, the fascination is, is really that Walpole had many of the jobs. I mean, what, what does Boris Johnson do? Well, he's uh, head of government. Well, you know, um, uh, Walpole was effectively head of government. Um, Boris is first Lord of the Treasury and uh, ultimately overseeing uh, the finances of the nation. Well, Walpole far more was overseeing the finances of the nation. Boris Johnson is the chief appointer to cabinet and to uh, 400 other posts. Well, uh, Walpole uh, had an extraordinary grip on um, a patronage called the Robinocracy. So look, look, there are clearly significant differences, uh, which I talk about in the book, but it's the, it's the similarities that in a way are more interesting because they've been less talked about. There are five proposals I have, and one is that the Prime Minister simply doesn't have enough time to do the job. It is absurd that 
that they are not from pillar to post with 24 hour news media and they feel actually wrongly they have to react to uh, everything they lose sense of the big picture for the sake of the small and the tight picture they don't uh, travel around the united kingdom part of the reason why uh, there's so much pressure on the united kingdom uh, which consolidated in the 300 years by the prime minister there's so much pressure now for it to break up is because they're pretty much just the Prime Minister of England or the southeast of England. It's many years since Prime Minister had regular overnight stays in Northern Ireland and, and Wales and Scotland and travelled round. They don't have time for Parliament. We're a democracy, for goodness sake. Um, and they rarely go and they resent it when they're there. They don't have much time for their parties or their MPs. They don't have time to go to the cinema to... Uh, go to plays, to, to, to go um, and take part in uh, family events. Their own families often suffer. They don't spend enough time with their uh, friends. When they're on holiday, they feel constantly guilty because the press makes them feel guilty and they allow themselves to feel guilty because of that. Whereas they need to be relaxing and showing that actually having a proper holiday is a very good thing for their own psychological and mental health, as well as the example it gives. So. I'm suggesting that we need to regularise the position of Deputy Prime Minister um, to oversee domestic policy and foreign uh, affairs. The Foreign Secretary is just a pale, pale shadow of the job as it was in the early 20th uh, century. And without running over all the others, uh, let me just say one or two, it's a very white, male, um, middle class place. Uh, the book begins with a conversation, um, imaginary, sadly, uh, where Boris Johnson has invited Walpole back into Downing Street uh, for a tete-a-tete -tete over dinner um, and to talk about the job of Prime Minister as it's evolved over 300 years. Uh, and they're pretty icy with each other until they discover that they both studied in the same rooms, slept in the same rooms, read books in the same library, exercised in the same yard, at the same school Eton, uh, and um, it, it's just not good enough uh, that uh, <laughs> uh, 40% have been from uh, Eton and 80% um, from Oxford and Cambridge, uh, only two women, and BAME is really disgraceful for an organisation that should be leading the country it, it just needs to become as the course of the prime minister themselves and with Kamala Harris now, now vice president of the United States um you know what an example that is we just need to make the office of the prime minister uh and number 10 itself a much better reflection of the country as it now is as we go into the fourth century for the prime minister The job is not impossible, but the way that the prime ministers have chosen to conduct themselves means that often it's a very disappointing result. I mean, they all come in and they trash their uh, predecessors. And they come in full of bile and, and ignorance and, and hatred of their predecessor without wanting to learn uh, what to do. So if there was more humility, greater respect for history, a greater understanding about what makes successful prime ministers and what doesn't, we would have a far more successful office. And we need to have that. So it's not impossible at all as an office, despite the huge constraints that have grown up on it uh, since Walpole uh, and Peel and, and Pitt and Liverpool and Salisbury and Lloyd George were uh, prime ministers, um, but it has uh, the way they choose to do it uh, and a kind of pig ignorant mentality that they have when they come in, still more their teams, you know, who are just sizzling with venom. Uh, no one more so, some as much as, but no one more so than Dominic Cummings. I mean, you know, come on. I mean, the, the, the result is entirely obvious that it's going to, these people will not endure. You don't change organisations by declaring war on the structures. You have to be subtler and more persuasive and just more intelligent, actually.